MCP is pretty popular. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 use cases for MCP as a developer or a designer that you can use right now. If you haven't heard of MCP before, it's simply a way to allow AI agents to call tools. Tools from your own computer or even from third-party services like Figma, Docker, or even just your own terminal. First, let's make sure that we can get MCP up and running. I'm going to be using Claude Desktop to serve as the connecting layer between the tools I want to implement and the AI models that will do so. I've tried MCP on both macOS and Windows, and while it works a lot better on macOS, you can still set it up for Windows if that's what you're running. Here, I've installed Claude Desktop on my account and I've logged in using Google Auth. There is one more step we need before we can start using MCP, which is to enable developer mode with the protocols we want MCP to have access to. Here inside of Claude Desktop, I'm going to head over to settings and then select developer and then edit the configuration file. This will locate the file, which I'm going to edit in my code or of choice, which is right now cursor. And then here I'm going to paste in the configuration to access my file system. I'll need to update the file system directory here to have my username instead of this placeholder for username. And that is pretty much it. Now, all I have to do is restart Claude Desktop and I can start utilizing MCP. You'll know it's worked if you get this little tool icon just below your filter options, which has a little bit of a connector here. And if you select it, then you'll see that you have MCP installed as well as what you can do. Our first use case for MCP will be file organization. I definitely recommend this if it's the first time you're using MCP. You see the one folder that's always quite disorganized is my downloads folder. Here you can see lots of photos and PDFs as well as executable downloads and all of this is a huge mess. We've provided Claude with access to the file system. You still will need to approve it, but once you do, you'll see the list of all the files and folders inside of any directory you've approved inside of the chat window. Then the AI model will go through and organize it based on what prompt you've given. In this case, I've just wanted them to be moved in different types of folders and just organize a little bit better, as well as removing or deleting any duplicates. I've now run this for a few minutes and I've hit the maximum length for messages. But let's have a look at the results. Here inside of files, I can see a lot of my files have been organized into these folders. I can expand these out and here I have all my images, my installers, as well as things like all my videos. So this is much better organized than what I had in the past. For the next example, I want to be able to use MCP to send emails on behalf of me. Right now, the majority of AI tools allow you to have a chat interface. And if you do want them to write up an email, you will have to manually copy and paste that across. So my goal here will be to use the MCP server to connect straight to my Gmail and from there send emails directly from my email address. This will need a little bit more setup. In this case, I'm going to be using Zapier Actions. It's a way to allow you to connect up an MCP server straight to Zapier, which can then perform these actions on your behalf. Heading to Actions, I'm going to connect up the ones that I want to utilize for this example. So this will be to perform Gmail interactions and later on I want to do maybe some Discord channel messages too. There's a quick configuration guide on how to connect these actions to Claude, which is to copy over this MCP server configuration. It comes with a secret key, so make sure you guys keep this hidden. And from there, I'll just restart Claude and I'll see that it's now available as a tool for MCP to utilize. Here, I'm going to prompt Claude to send an email to myself, reminding myself that there's a new design course called Enhance UI that I can check out. I want to then send myself an email regarding it. And here, I'm going to allow that email to be sent through the Zapier MCP. According to Claude, it's been sent. So let's see if it's arrived. And here's that new email. It looks like it delivered immediately. Additionally, it's got my email address here. It's got a little bit of a description and a call to action, and it is using my official email address, which is pretty cool. It links to my website, and here people can purchase my course. Since we're on the topic of emails, another use case for MCP is email management. I've added a few additional actions to my MCP tools, which include labeling, deleting, and finding emails. This time, I want it to organize my mail inbox, because it's usually a mess with hundreds of emails and normally disorganized without any labels and a lot of spam too. Here, Claude is scanning through my inbox and then selecting to label certain emails and delete others. Here you can see it deleted that email about some sort of a new design course. And here it appropriately updated some of my important emails. There are other ways you can manage your emails, such as preparing drafts or replying to people. And it's really up to you to configure it the way you want. 
For the next MCP example, I wanted to be able to control my web browser to perform tasks on my behalf. For this, I'll be combining Puppeteer with MCP, allowing it to interact with the web browser through JavaScript using the following web tool. I've copied this syntax into my JSON configuration file. And if I head to tools over here, you can see that Puppeteer is now available as one of the tools that it can utilize. Let me test that out by asking it to summarize the best articles from the last week from dev.2. It'll request access to run Puppeteer with a web browser on the side. Here it is. And then it'll go on to the web, browsing different pages, collecting the information I need and compiling that all into a nice little summary of the top articles that are probably of interest to me this week. Like this one with the top MCP ideas that you should try or five projects you should build if you're a developer and a few others. The next use case is to use MCP with WhatsApp to send messages and complete tasks. First, I'll connect it up to WhatsApp here in Zapier and now it's available as one of the tools I can utilize. I requested Claw to send me a message of hello world with a JavaScript function straight to my WhatsApp so I understand exactly how this function works. And here it is. Blender combined with MCP is another use case. I've seen people connect Claude to Blender through MCP to be able to design different types of 3D models and scenes. And it's pretty impressive what you can actually get it to do. For example, you could create an image in Midjourney, upload it, and then get it to be created in Blender. It goes through and creates the entire scene as if it was a 3D mockup. Then you can ask it to take a closer look at that Blender 3D model and recreate it using JavaScript and 3JS. And the result is a full 3D scene with this rendered in the web browser on any device. Another example is Figma. You can have a Figma accessible as an MCP tool that you can now control through applications like Cursor or just through Claude. It'll then go through and create different types of designs, such as this login screen for a mobile viewport. If you're getting into MCP, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can control Docker through MCP or update GitHub or even control your Spotify library. There are official and third party servers that you can start to connect to pretty much anything that you can imagine. So let me know if you found this interesting and if you want a deeper dive into MCP and some of the creative things you can do.